So this will be a demonstration of the Coulomb balance, um, which will be a way to test to see if Coulomb's inverse square law uh, corresponds to electrostatic force. Um, so here we have two pith balls. I'm gonna charge one on a Windsor's machine. I'm gonna to touch this ball to this pith ball. And at first it will attract, um, acquiring the same charge, it will then repel in the opposite direction. And we can measure the angle of repulsion using this torsion balance. And torsion is basically a measure of how twisted a wire is. So as the ball is repelled, I can bring it back to its original position by rotating this dial. And as I do that, I'll get an angle measurement, which is directly proportional to the force that's acting on the ball. Um, so instead of force quantities, we can use angle measurements uh, for our calculations. And on this side of the balance, there's a centimeter ruler that will tell us exactly the distance between the center of this ball and the center of that ball, um, because it's the centers of force that uh, give, the, give accurate measurements. So I'm gonna charge this pith ball on the Winsurst machine, which uh, is fairly complicated, but the basic principle is that as I rotate the handle, you'll see these plastic wheels start to spin. And these will pick up ambient charges in the air and distribute them to these two separate Leyden jars. So one side will have resinous electricity, the other side will have vitreous. Um, I'm not sure which one will have which, but that won't matter for, for this practicum. Um, so to get a fairly decent data set, we're gonna charge this pith ball by holding it to one prong of the Winshurst. Um, and we're gonna rotate this for probably 30 turns. A little further. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, four. Okay, so this has been charged with 40 turns of the Wimsurst machine. I'm going to discharge the Wimsurst. There we go. Then I'm going to bring it close to this pith ball. Notice it attracts and then it immediately repels, um, which is what we want. And so center to center for a distance of 20 centimeters, um, we have a torsion angle of five degrees. I bring it closer to 18 centimeters. We get a measure of seven degrees. I'm gonna bring it to 16 centimeters now. I've got nine degrees at 14 centimeters eleven degrees at twelve centimeters Sixteen degrees at ten centimeters twenty two degrees at eight centimeters. Thirty-three degrees. And for our last trial, at six centimeters, it's 
51 degrees. So right now the Coulomb balance is uh, calibrated for the neutral stage. So the pith ball is not charged, the dial reads zero degrees, and these two lines match up. Um, you notice that as I bring a charged pith ball close to the second one, you see an attraction and then you see a repulsion. And so in order to measure that angle, basically I twist this dial, which forces the pith ball suspended on the wire to go back to its original position. Is that about lined up? I can't tell from my angle. Almost. Almost. Okay. In any case, um, that's how we're measuring the angle of torsion, which we're going to use for a set of force. So in this table, we've compiled results from two different trials. And you see that we are getting a relatively comparable distribution. Um, so we can use this data to test whether Coulomb's inverse square law applies to electrostatic force. Um, the inverse square law says that force F is inversely proportional to the square of its distance. Um, and the other way of writing that is that the first, the first force measurement is to a second first, uh, force measurement as the second distance squared is to the first distance squared. Um, and as I said before, instead of using force quantities, we'll be using the angle of the, that the torsion wire moved through. Um, so theta one will be to theta two as the square of the second distance is to the square of the first distance. Um, so if I just take um, the first two trials for a distance of six and eight centimeters, um, our theta one is 51 degrees. Theta 2 is 33 degrees, and we're going to see if that's the same as the second distance, which is 8 centimeters squared, as the first distance, which is 6 centimeters squared. Um, so I'm just going to take my calculator. Um, so if I divide 51 through 33, at 1.55, and then if I take 64 divided by 36, I get 1.77. Um, so the numbers are close, but they're not exactly the same. Um, so maybe we'll try one more, um, one more data set. So if I take the second this time, and the third, I'll have 33 to 22 as uh, 100, 10 squared is to 8 squared. So these numbers are much closer to each other. Um, so we're not going to go through all the calculations, but um, you guys can go through the data set and see if this actually corresponds to the theoretical result.